Well, hello there, friends. I know you heard of Osobuco before, Osobuco Milanese, which is the veal shank. Very expensive, very difficult to get. So I decided I'm gonna make it with lamb. Lamb shank is available everywhere. Reasonable, and it's fantastic. I'm gonna show you how to make it to perfection, how to braise it, and I'm serving it with my butter mashed potatoes. So easy to bake it. Bacon in the oven, that's what we're gonna do. Anyway, remember, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're making a beautiful braised lamb shank. Okay, friends, well, let me show you how to make those lamb shank. They're wonderful, and they're not that expensive. I mean, in compared to a veal shank, oh, mamma mia. So the shank is the bottom of the leg, before the foot, and, uh, and, and the, uh, the, the lamb uh, shank is, uh, you can find it everywhere, in every grocery store, friends. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Basically, we're gonna have to do it the same cooking method. We're gonna braise them. And braise means submerge in liquid. And so, I got salt and pepper in a shank, and then I go from uh, the salt and pepper, I'm gonna put it in flour. And, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute it in a pan. Now, you can do it in the same pot. You can saute the shank in the same pot. The problem that I have when I do that, friends, is the flour then gets stuck in the bottom of the, of the pot. I stand and see the burn after uh, an, an hour and a half of cooking, you see? So if I do it in a fry pan, then I don't have to deal with that. So. You, like I said, you can do it in the same pot. Let me make sure my fry pan is hot, my oil is hot. Uh, you can do it in the same pot, uh, but be careful. If you have flour stuck in the bottom, you're gonna have to get rid of it, friends. You're gonna have to scrape your pot, otherwise you cook in the same pot for an hour and a half. It has a good tendency of burning in the bottom. I got a big onion going over there. You know, you start always with the onion first. Always remember that, okay? So important, and I know the, the 1.6 million subscriber we got, they know it already. They heard me six million times saying it. Uh, but for the new people, remember, you don't put the onion, the celery, and the carrots together. You put them one at a time, all right? So the onion first, always number first, always, always, always. And then we got the, the celery, and then we got the, um, the carrots, the usual suspect in a, a braising environment. I cut the carrots kind of funny a little bit here. I have a... We did a video on how to cut all the vegetables, and, uh, um, and, and I'll show you how to do it. You don't have to do that. You can just slice them any way you want, friends. I got the oil right here at 365 degrees. Okay, I have a digital thermometer that measures the temperature of the oil because I don't want to go in a cold oil. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, braise them to create the Maillard reaction, caramelization of the protein, okay? And we're going to give it a good color. And, uh, and uh, when they're really nice in color, then we're gonna put them in the pot and we're gonna braise them. But we're gonna first do uh, uh, some things in the pot. All right, friends, so let's put them in here right now. Let's not worry about them too much. We don't want them to touch too much. Let me wash my hand again. We don't want them to touch too much because if they, if they touch too much, they don't brown as good, you see? They don't caramelize as much. So we wanna keep them separate. You know, sometimes you got a recipe that tells you um, uh, 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 saute the meat without crowding, crowding. <laughs> That's what that means. Make sure they don't touch each other so the heat from this doesn't go in this one and creates more of a stew environment. All right, so we got the onion going over there. This is a very simple recipe to make, friends. Really simple, huh? I keep turning the wrong burner. I've only been working with this stove for 20 years. You think I know which burner is what? By the way, for those of you that are not new, the perfect temperature of the oil that we're looking for is 365 degrees. You can use clarified butter, uh, except Jack used it all yesterday, so I have no more, so I used the beautiful olive oil. I got my garlic olive oil that I love so much, it's perfect. And uh, we're gonna saute the onion right there, getting beautiful golden brown. And then we're gonna put some wine, we're gonna do the rest of the ingredient. Okay, look, you can see the onion, are starting to caramelize nicely. This is what we want. The, um, we, we got um, a fresh thyme and rosemary. That's the herbs I like. 
You can put sage, you can put oregano. A dry oregano actually would be fantastic in there. And I say dry oregano because lately the oregano we're getting here in Florida tastes like nothing. So I'd rather use a dry oregano, at least it tastes good, but <coughs> I'm not using it in this recipe. So uh, we're gonna put a little bit of the rosemary. I don't need all that. That's about a two teaspoon of rosemary and about two teaspoon of uh, fresh thyme. We're gonna put uh, about uh, 12 cloves of garlic. I am not measuring, eh? it doesn't matter. 12 or 13, you think it's gonna make a difference? No, you know. We're gonna get this to get a little more color in here. We don't have enough color on those guys. I want them to be beautiful caramelized. We're gonna continue cooking this. How long do we cook the garlic for? You all know it. You cook the garlic until you can smell it. And the minute you smell it, what do you do? You add a liquid to it. And what liquid are we gonna to add to this? Very simple, friends. Wine. <laughs> now, a lot of you are gonna say, well, I don't drink wine. You should consider it. No, really, you should try it one time, you know, because it's delicious. <laughs> you don't drink wine, don't worry about it. We'll put a little stock in there for you. Put a little beef stock, okay? I can smell my garlic, my onion, my herbs are smelling wonderful already, so what do I do? I put a little wine in there. Just measure it carefully. Okay? <laughs> I had a glass last night, so I had three quarter of a bottle left, so it's about uh, uh, three quarter of a bottle. We'll get you the exact measurement. Not that it matters, because here's what we're gonna do, friends. Whenever you're cooking with wine, you wanna reduce it by half. We're doing a wine reduction, okay? We're gonna let that reduce. We're gonna bring this to boil. We're gonna continue sauteing all this until it's beautiful golden brown. And when the shanks are gorgeous golden brown, which we're getting there, when the wine is reduced, we'll come back, we'll put everything together. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, friends, well, as you can see, I moved the, uh, the shank on, on the plate, and uh, whoo, it's hot. And, and if you notice, look, look, I got hardly any wine left in there. And you, you kind of know by, uh, by testing it, friends. If you're not sure, your wine should be nice and smooth by now, okay? Uh, it should be, so you test it. It should be nice and smooth. Okay, now, remember, if you start with a $3 bottle of wine, I don't care how long you cook, it's never gonna get smooth, okay? So, I'm not saying going out there and buy a $50 bottle of wine, but uh, buy a good wine, a wine you can, you be willing to drink, you know, because you'd be nice to serve with this, okay? But if you can't, you can't. Just put the best you can, all right? And like I said, if you don't drink wine, just you skip that whole thing, you're gonna put stock, all right? We're gonna put the carrots in there, and we're gonna put our celery in there. And uh, this is um, about, I had a, 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 a whole a stock of celery, like maybe five, six branches, I don't know. It, it, would you say that was about three cups of celery and two cups of carrots? Cut them up in little pieces, right? Uh, not that big of a deal. I got a can, a 28 ounce can of uh, whole tomatoes. Uh, um, I use uh, Lavalle tomatoes and uh, peeled tomatoes. You can squeeze them. Trust me, after they, 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 they cook for an hour and a half, they, they, don't, they don't need to be squeezed anymore. So we're gonna put them in there like this. They'll be fine. I got a, a, a cup and a quarter, a cup and a half of tomato puree to give us a little more consistency, right? And, um, and then also, we're gonna put some beef stock in here, friends. I have my beautiful beef stock. You guys are familiar with the beef stock. If you don't have this, then you use a store-bought beef stock. Now remember my, uh, my uh, okay, so that's uh, eight ounces so far. I, I you'll see how many I'm gonna put. So far I got uh, 12 and I got 16 ounces, okay, so far. But I'm not really measuring it because really what I'm basing it on is uh, uh, how much I need to cover the whole thing to create a beautiful liquid than the um, uh, braising liquid, then the uh, uh, the shanks are gonna cook into it. I am putting salt and pepper in mine because um, uh, my my stock is doesn't have any salt in it because it's homemade. If you're using a store bought uh, so watch the sodium content. It's got a lot of them. You may not even need to add uh, a salt, okay? because they love it enough in there. So look at this, they, they, they're gonna be crowded in there, boy. 
They're going to have a party in there. They're going to be crowded, friends. Look at this. Do you see? And then I'm going to serve it with a beautiful mashed potatoes. Now you can also serve it with a polenta. You can serve it with so many things. We're going to cook them. We're going to bring this to boil, friends. Okay, we're going to, we're going to bring it to boil. And as soon as it's boiling, we're going to reduce it down. You can cook it on the stove and, uh, and not worry about it. But, but if you do it on the stove, you're, you're going to have to uh, check the bottom every uh, 30 minutes or so if you do it, just to make sure nothing sticks in the bottom. And uh, if you're doing it in the oven, which is actually the easiest way to do it, pop your oven at 375, put them in there with a top on, and cook it in the oven however long it takes to see. With the meat. And we're going to tell you exactly because we're going to do it. We're going to put a, pop it in the oven so we don't have to worry about it. It's easier to do it in the oven, but you can do it on the stove. I'll give you the two cooking technique. It's up to you. All right? So we're going to let it cook, and we'll come back when it's falling off the bone, and we're going to serve with the mashed potatoes. Okay, friends, we cook them at 375 for two and a half hours. Takes a while. That's why I say it's easier in the oven. Pop them in the oven and don't worry about a thing. And I took them out a few minutes ago so I could actually handle them. Uh, and uh, it smells amazing. It really smells fantastic, friends. Um, I want to make sure then you um, uh, uh, serve them with whatever you want. I serve them with mashed potatoes. I want to show you how I make the mash. You know, I already made a video on mashed potato, Jack. I'll give you a link for that, friends. But the, when I have a dinner party, and uh, and you guys at my dinner party, you're invited for dinner. I put them in a bowl like this, right? And uh, and and then I put a plastic on top of the bowl, and then I also put a a ceramic rack. And believe it or not, you can put them in a microwave. You know, it works p perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. I've been doing it for years. Okay, and then, uh, but do it however you want to do it, okay? And then we take an a, a, a ice cream scoop. <laughs> it's an ice cream cube, scoop of the champion. And you put it right in there, just like this, right? And, <laughs> and then you take a, 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 a chunk, and uh, I think uh, one is going to be enough for me. Uh, let me find one. Let me find one. They're not difficult to find. Huh? And friends, we're gonna put it right there. And, uh, and and let me show you. You put it right in there, however you want to put it. Obviously, at this point, friend. Now it's all about the sauce. Okay, it's all about the sauce. Okay, let me put this over here, and uh, and then you take some some of the of the beautiful sauce in here, friends. And and the sauce is not as smooth as I like them. To be, but let me tell you, friends, this is amazing. Okay, so uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna show you in a minute what it looks like when you break into it. And then you'll put some beautiful, and you'll probably put a, a sprig of parsley uh, or something to make it look. You can also serve it with a polenta. The polenta would be delicious. Mashed potatoes, polenta, anything you want. Papadella pasta. I mean, this is, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to do it to the camera. And we're just going to break one. I want to show you. Oh, mamma mia, look at the mess I made. So don't pay attention. Look look at this, friends. Look how beautiful that is. You see? Look at this. It just falls apart. You see? This is, look at this. Look how gorgeous that is, friends. Look at this. You see? It falls apart. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And this is going to be so tender. See, look, you can break it up with a fork. I took a knife, but you can really break it with a fork. And this is so delicious. I have a little mashed potato with it, and then, and then you inhale. Mm. Oh, wow. You see that? I didn't even have to chew. It just melt. Mm. It just melt in my mouth. Mm. It's so fantastic. And also, book on a budget. I hope you'll make it. Believe me, friends, you're going to love it. It's fantastic. You can put it off the bone if you want, but I think it's dramatic to serve it on a bone and let your friends enjoy it. Um, I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching, friends. Wow, it's fantastic. Look at it. Look at the way it's, it's made. I put it in my mouth. And you don't even have to chew it. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's just fantastic.
absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited. I think they're going to love it. See, look, you can break it up like this. Just fantastic. I think they're going to love it. If they've never made it before, it's a perfect recipe for them. You see, look at look how beautiful that is. Mmm, yeah. delicious. Fantastic. I'm glad we made it. Mmm. Mm. Fantastic. 